Hey everybody, welcome back to the Medverse channel and today we're going to delve into a topic that I'm actually shocked is not getting national coverage and is quite a shocking case actually. So we're going to dive deep into this case and figure out what is going on here and what are the implications for the medical field. So the headline here is there is a racist doctor in Houston, Texas that has recently been exposed by a whistleblower. So the man in the center of it all right now is Dr. Carl Anthony Simon, who I say doctor because he is actually a PA. So what happened was that there was an anonymous caller that called into Team Health or Herman Hospital where he actually works and exposed his racist calls and texts and basically just spilled the beans on this guy. And this is where things took a turn for the super weird. So instead of taking action against the PA, they actually revealed the identity of the caller to this PA. So what did the PA decide to do at that point? Did he decide to run away and hide and and quit his job and live under a rock for the rest of his life? No, not at all. He actually decided to sue the tipster for defamation. So this video we're about to look at is actually the disposition of this case of the PA under oath trying to explain and clear up his side of what is going on. So we're actually gonna look at the video of this PA and we're gonna see for ourselves what he's saying and of course warning for those that are uh, sensitive to uh, vulgar vulgarity. Uh, there's a lot of vulgarity here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the highlights. So let's get right into it. Did this locker room talk consist of pejorative terms about people of other cultures? Uh, yes. Including African American or black people? Yes. Including Hispanic? Yes. Including Jewish people? Yes. Including people who are overweight? Yes. Are these kinds of negative comments appropriate to make about children with Down syndrome? Objection form. We say a lot of inappropriate stuff, uh, all joking around. Not I'm proud of some of the things that I've said before. How do you say inappropriate things about kids with Down syndrome? But what's the symbolic meaning? I'm lost on that one. I don't Does that remember. mean white people good, black people bad? Thumbs down? I don't remember. You would agree with me, would you not, that that comment's improper? Inappropriate, yes. Not proud of it. Oh, from your phone number. Include, old Jewish women with cancer are my Memorial City specialty. Fat black girls are too. Then there's the term nigger. And then there's the comment, did you cut a check for nigger Chris Smith? Did he say anything else? Then you say golf and baseball are rich white man's and poor Latino's sport. Hoops are for niggers and white guys that don't have enough eye-hand coordination to hit a baseball or golf ball. Then you say white niggers taking care of business tonight. What the hell does that even mean? Are you tracking me? Am I saying anything incorrect about reading from these statements? A lot of inappropriate locker room talk that I'm not proud of. Man, I gotta, I gotta figure out where this locker room is that all these guys are uh, claiming this talk goes on. I've never been in a locker room of that nature. So, despite all of these comments in these documents, you are maintaining that you are not racist. Correct. Correct. Is it? Is. <laughs> I love how the person interviewing this guy couldn't even keep a straight face. <laughs> he literally answered no, he is not racist after all. Is it your belief that others who share your love of athletics routinely use this kind of commentary? Objection of form. Is it your experience that they do? Uh, in my experience, yes. I don't know what locker room this guy's talking about. I don't know what sport this is. This is like the, the KKK baseball league, uh, K, KLB, KKKLB, maybe that locker room. I don't know about any other locker room. I don't know about any jokes like that. These are like, these aren't even jokes. They're just raw racist comments. Can you draw a swastika? No objection of form. Uh, I don't remember. Take your best Watch shot. The way it looks. Objection Take of your form. best shot. Objection of form. Do I have to draw? Yes. You said you don't remember. I don't, I mean. 28 has the words, drop your suit 
against Anthony, nigger lover 88 with two swastikas. Is that your handiwork, sir? Objection of warrant. Never seen this before. Well, you're not denying that you do, so my question is, how could your reputation at Memorial Hermann be harmed by your using that kind of terminology if your friends there also use that same kind of terminology? Objection to form. When you use the term Canadians in a pejorative sense, what do you mean? Uh, that is a reference to African Americans, I believe. For beautiful Saturday like today and I'm in the fucking ER taking care of Mexicans and Canadians. Did you mean Mexicans and African Americans? Most likely. Is that to you a pejorative term like nigger? Uh, inappropriate comment. How do you know Don? Uh, we grew up together, went to college together. Does he engage in the same kind of locker room talk that you do? Yes. How about Don? Does he do it too? Uh, yes. So he uses the same kind of terminology we've just described in your exhibit? Uh, uh, I'd have to look at my phone to see exactly what we've said in the past. Neither of these organizations have ethical rules? I'm sure they do. Are you familiar with those ethical rules? Uh, some of them. Do those ethical rules forbid your disparaging patients? I'd have to take a look at the rules. So you don't know? Not, not for certain. Are those kind of comments inconsistent with the ethical requirements of your profession? Objection of no, it Sounds like uh, just locker room talk, guys joking around. Well, that, that may be, but it's directly inquiring of you about your medical services and you're commenting on who you treated, your patients, you're describing your patients. Is that acceptable to the ethical <coughs> boards of the, the Texas Medical Board and the national version of that who issues your licensure? Uh, you'd, have to ask, you'd have to ask them. Team Health HR department had a discussion with my supervisors and administration on about whether to terminate me or not. And what was their decision? Uh, they chose not to at this time. Uh, they thought about uh, uh, terminating me, um, but at that moment they decided not to, um, uh, since they said I was an upstanding uh, person and employee. Okay. Did they issue any new restrictions on your employment? No, not that I'm aware of. Did they tell you they were going to reduce your salary or compensation as a result? Not that I'm aware of. Did they put you on any kind of suspension or probation? Not that I'm aware of. It's okay. We'll guide each other down this tunnel. You show me how to disrespect property and con people on the streets, and I'll show you good old-fashioned Southern racism. That was referring to you, wasn't it? As uh, a good old, good old-fashioned Southern racist. Sounds like I was uh, joking around. That is a lot worse than I was expecting. I actually hadn't seen that whole thing. I just saw bits and pieces of it. That was the first time I actually went through the whole thing. That is a lot worse than I thought. So, so just to continue on with what exactly happened, the judge actually threw out the defamation. And then the tipster went after Team Health and the Memorial Hospital because they revealed his name. 
So what happened after that and why a lot of people are furious at the team health or hospital or whoever's in charge of him working there is that he continued to work there. He continued to work there for months and months and you would think he would have been fired or investigated, but he was fired just a few days ago. Yeah, just a few days ago when this disposition happened months ago. He has been seeing patients this entire time, which is why, you know, I've in doing my research, I've been seeing comments of people saying, why are you guys angry at, at the hospital and things like that? You know, they fired him. They, they let him see patients for months. They knew about this. They knew this individual was going to be a problem and they didn't do their due diligence. They didn't do their investigation until things became public. Now that this video of this disposition is leaked, now it goes out the emails of damage control and we can see somebody has leaked one of the emails that was sent out by by the hospital and you can read along with me here blah 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 he has not ever been an employee we don't stand for this blah 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 we don't know the details about how much they knew or what was going on but we do know enough that this individual should not have been seeing patients he should have been let go far before just a few days ago so that is where the outrage is on the hospitals end and team health or whoever's responsible for this guy it's a little mumbo jumbo with the hospital saying he's not ours, he's part of team health or whatever nonsense that means. And you can tell throughout this entire video, he is not apologetic. He is very, he even says that he's proud of some of the things that he said before. Uh, throughout the entire thing, just sits there through all the racist comments that are being read, denies the fact that he's racist, has this stuff being read to him and still holds that these are locker room comments, he's just joking around. And there is something to be said about this as well. The fact that he has all this flying in his face and he's still denying the fact that he is a racist. Racism is more than somebody that carries out an act of violence against a group or overtly denies someone's service. Racism is thoughts, words, jokes, so it could be at the level of the subconscious. So one thing I really wanted to talk about in this video is what is the impact of all these racist individuals in our healthcare field? I mean, just on this channel a few months back when Shaman and Beneath were here, we did a coverage on the girl that had those Facebook posts that were really racist. And just a quick Google search will show you all the racist comments made by doctors out there or whoever in the medical profession, nurses, doctors, discriminatory treatment of patients. It is pretty insane and very terrifying. And it just makes you wonder how patients are being affected on a day-to-day -day basis by these people that are pervasive throughout the system. Of course it is a minority, but when we're dealing with something as volatile as people's lives in the healthcare field, even a minority is actually a consequential difference maker in the outcomes of these patients. And of course there are no studies, no one's done any research, because how are you gonna identify the outcomes of people under racist healthcare practitioners when we don't have the data of who's racist or not. But one thing is very clear is that these individuals with very prejudiced beliefs are making it through our system, whether it be through the admission system, whether it be through hiring them for certain jobs, whatever it may be, they're slipping through the cracks. Who knows how many of these types of individuals have their hands in the care of our loved ones in the healthcare field. Frankly, to me, that is the most terrifying part about these kind of stories. Medical admissions is a field where we look at numbers, we look at high GPAs, we look at high MCATs, we look at what you've done on paper, and then we do a nice little 30 minute interview on how the individual can act. So to conclude, just like every facet of our society, racism does exist in the healthcare system. We might be able to start off by screening applicants better, putting more emphasis on the character and ethics of the applicant, and also commending the whistleblower. We wouldn't be talking about this today. I can't believe this news is not blowing up across the country. We wouldn't be talking about this today if this was not brought to light by them. I hadn't even heard about this. I actually received an email from one of you guys, thankfully, to cover this story because I hadn't even heard about this. So guys, that will do it for this video. Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this story. Just your thoughts on what it's like having these kind of people in our healthcare system that could possibly be your doctor. Who knows how deep this is? Who knows how systemic this problem is? So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys share this video with somebody that you think might not have heard about this case and we will see you guys in the next one.